Okay, guys, can you? Why don't I have my microphone? I should talk, okay, sorry. Okay, we're about to start the next talk. We're here with Ben Sternfeld. Ben is a free software developer and activist from Melbourne. He organizes Free Software Melbourne and leads the End Software Patents Australia campaign. And from this morning, he's an uncle. So we want to ask Ben to come up and have a talk on ending software patents in Australia. Hello, everyone. Um, don't mind me if I'm a little bit more excited today than about it. It's not just software patents because I'm an uncle this morning too, so that's exciting. This is a, uh, a picture. Um, I used to like drawing futuristic sort of machines when I was little. You know, what they like transport, what they might look like when they're, you know, um, when I'm growing up or in the future or something like that. So this is a picture of a hovercraft. See this little guy in there? He's using a computer, and on the computer, there's a, he's using a program called Microsoft Internet Explorer. And Microsoft Internet Explorer is a program that's useful for downloading free software web browsers. <laughs> so he's downloading a program called Mozilla Firefox so he can watch patent unencumbered video format in OGTH or, uh, what's the other one? WebM. WebM, of course. <coughs> While we're on the topic of video, uh, there's been quite a lot of fancy looking cameras around at this conference that I've seen. So, you know, just about everyone's carrying one over their shoulder with a lens this big. I bought a sort of entry level digital camera last year, and this is the manual. If you flip to the back, I was a little bit horrified to find this phrase in the, in the back here. It says, it basically says, if you take video with this camera, you can only use it for personal or non commercial purposes. It's, it was a bit of a shock to me. I, you know, I didn't know about this when I bought the camera. How can that be put upon me? So really what I want to say is that these things affect you. Um, and what this talk today will be about is that the patent system being a bad fit for computing. And I'm hopefully going to tell you a bit of a story about what we've been doing to do something about that. And, um, how you can get involved. You said personal or non-commercial. It says personal and non-commercial. Sorry, I misread. Does personal that and non-commercial. Does that mean non-commercial publication is also public? I don't know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, what are patents? What are they for? Patents are for the benefit of society. They're a, they're a mechanism that our government has put in to benefit us. Like traffic signs, like a, you know, a road safety system, they're a compromise that we, uh, you know, we give up some of our freedoms, such as the freedom to drive in a straight direction through this intersection. <laughs> we have to drive around in circles. We give, this, we give up this, this freedom to drive straight uh, because it helps everyone. We, it's a benefit to society. The patent system is supposed to work in the same way. It's, uh, it's, the idea is that um, you give up uh, the ability to use a particular idea um, because so someone, someone comes up with an idea uh, and they, they say, well, this is particularly inventive, so they register it with the patent office and then um, for, for their, you know, their inventiveness, they get a uh, sort of short-term monopoly on this idea, and anyone else uh, is restricted from using that idea for that period of time. <coughs> so, the idea of this is to promote progress. Like the road system is to promote safety, this is to promote progress. Uh, some things specifically, you, you guys probably already know a lot about patents, but I'll give you a few things just, just for the sake of it. You don't get them automatically, you have to apply for a patent. They're quite, quite unlike copyright. So if you know a bit about copyright, um, they're quite unlike copyright. Independent invention of, a, uh, of something is not a defense in patents. So 
if you've come up with something on one side of the world and someone else has come up with something on the other side of the world and they've patented it, uh, they can sue you. That's okay. So, seems like a great idea, right? You know, this will promote progress by, you know, encouraging people to invent things. Sounds good. Well, we got it wrong. It turns out it doesn't work like that. I'm not going to tell you all the detailed stuff that I was, I, if I was telling someone who didn't know much about software, I'd talk about why software is different to other things, but um, that's something you guys already know, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about why the problem crops up sort of thing. So, we all like to, if we're writing computer programs, we like to generalise about things. We like to use the same solution, that we like to use the same implementation to solve many problems. You know, something like, I was looking for an example of this, and uh, you know, this Parrot virtual machine that can generalise to multiple languages. It can, it can implement Perl or Python. Now that's a fantastic use of generalisation. It's using the same, same implementation to solve multiple problems. Uh, on the other end of the thing, say, if I was at home and I used the, the brush on the kitchen sink to start washing my bike, you know, cleaning the grease out of the, out of the bike, I'd get in trouble for that. That's a bad generalisation. The dish brush isn't suitable for using to clean my bike. <laughs> That's right, well then you can't use the dishes again, yes. So, this is a problem of generalisation. We've taken a system that was designed before computation information processing and we're now applying it to this industry. We're just saying, well, if it works well for other industries like, you know, mechanical engineering, it should also work well for, for computing. But it doesn't. How do we know this? Well, I've given you a few examples first up about video, but in a more general sort of sense, we see a real misuse of the system. The, these patents are used as weapons now, uh, weapons of anti-competition. The multinational corporations amass these patents, you know, in their briefcases, and they use them in bulk against their opponents, whether that's another multinational corporation or a small to medium business. This whole thing, you know, the, the, the idea of this is that you can only innovate then if you have a briefcase of your own full of patents that you can use to counter sue against these organisations. So what happens if you don't have that briefcase of patents? We end up wasting a whole lot of time on legal things and for society the end result of this is that small businesses can't compete. It's more expensive to write software, our software has less features and yeah, we just kill our small to medium business industry. <clears throat> so, going back to the, the road system, where we were trading, being able to drive in a straight line for, you know, um, some safety. Here we're trading off um, some, you know, these harms we're causing, like, you know, killing our industries, we're getting less features in our software and it's costing more. We're trading these off, um, you know, we're giving up these things and these large companies are benefiting. That's a bad trade, frankly. That's, that's really what we're trying to communicate. <clears throat> and as well as this, we're at a free software conference. The, this whole idea of people being able to restrict ideas in software is completely counter to what we're here for. It's, it just doesn't meet with our, our philosophy at all. So. What do we want out of this? We're running a campaign against software patents. What do we actually want out of this? I took this photo the other day. This is Lake Wendoree in Ballarat. Uh, <clears throat> our vision is to be, well, no, that's, that's my punchline. The end point of this is important because we can't just have a campaign about something, about something vague. What do we actually want to do? Do we want to change it? Do we want to, you know, get out of this industry entirely. What's our, what's our goal? I, I read on Wikipedia before it was blocked out by the SOPA fake thing. Um, and I don't, I don't know if this is true, it's off Wikipedia. William Cross Yule, uh, a early settler in Ballarat, uh, was near this 
it used to be a swamp, it's a man-made lake. He was near this swamp and he asked an Aboriginal woman nearby, what's the name of this? And she said, Windari, which means go away. <laughs> so that's really what we want for our, our campaign. We just want these people that are troubling us over um, patent issues to just go away and leave us in peace to write fantastic free software. And also because this campaign is applying to non-free software as well, non-free software. The other thing, the other goal of this, I guess, is to catch up to the New Zealanders. <laughs> there, you know, if there's one thing that I hate, it's being beaten to the punch by New Zealanders. So. Um, the reason why I'm, why am I getting involved in this? Uh, I'm, I'm a software developer. I live in Melbourne. I write software all day. Um, and I saw an opportunity to do this, and I just felt that there's so much passion about this in the community here. There's people, people are really keen about this, and at first I wasn't quite sure, but then once, once I talked to a few people, I could see that it was an issue, and I was able to, I was in a position to build on all this work that people have done in various free software projects around, um, various campaigns overseas and here already, and lots of research that people have done, and hopefully do something by pulling a bit of this together. Okay, so that's what we want. How do we get there? So, what could we do to, sort to, to actually get there? We could tweak the patent system. Um, sure, you know, like we could uh, do something to avoid these stupid, simple patents that people always talk about. You know, the, I'm sure you've heard numerous examples of ridiculous things that are patented. We could do that, but what are we really doing? We're sending this sort of mixed message about um, we're not, really, we're not really clear about what we're doing there. We're, we're saying some things are okay, some things are not. We kind of get this grey fuzzy area in the middle. <clears throat> I don't think tweaking the patent system is a good idea for our campaign. What else can we do? We can defend against it. What does free software do best? We write software. So we could, could we write software to do this? Well, that's something we're doing already. Um, who's heard of BZIP1? Not surprising. BZIP1 was never actually widely used because it, uh, it used arithmetic coding, ar arithmetic coding <laughs> and was replaced by BZIP2, which is Huffman coding. Uh, that, was, that piece of software was removed from our use because of these patent issues. So that we're doing that already. We're writing software to get around these problems. What else does free software do well? We write licenses. We love licenses. So we write the GPL version 3 and licenses like Apache version 2. These licenses have specific provisions in them <coughs> excuse me, to make uh, patent uh, lawsuits more difficult for people, make their lives harder by doing things like removing their access to the software if they sue someone about it. Some other things we're doing. We, we give irrevocable licenses to people Things like uh, video formats, like Theora and WebM. They're, they're examples of uh, where a company has taken a format that was previously patented and given an irrevocable license to the community. That's a, that's a great step. What else do we do? We write uh, public standard formats to get around patent restricted formats. Open Document is an example of that. Another thing we can do is be the toughest, meanest patent targets out there. <laughs> This is uh, Andrew Trigill and Andrew Bartlett. Uh, Andrew Trigill spoke in 2010 about how to defend against patents in the free software community, so I'd encourage you to have a look at that speech. <laughs> but we need to treat the cause of this, not just the symptoms. We can't just defend against them, we have to remove them entirely. This is that, that whole issue of, you know, if you're a computer gamer, you know, the, you have to destroy the spawn point. You can't just keep popping off the enemies because they just keep appearing. That's the same, the same thing with the patent system. So what are we trying to do? We, we essentially want to apply a patch to the patent system. We're campaigning to remove computation and information processing from patentable subject matter. That's what we're doing. We're trying to exclude 
what we do from patentable subject matter. So, how do we submit our bug report? Whoops, one too many. You've probably heard from me before at some point, or I've walked up to you at a conference and chewed your ear off about this issue or asked you to sign a piece of paper. Um, I'm just a, a software developer, so I'm learning a lot about this as I go. And I'll tell you a little bit about what we've done so far. So, there was this thing called a review of patentable subject matter in 2009. We missed that entirely. It was just, it wasn't on my radar, uh, and other people might have known about it, but nothing actually happened. Uh, I, I only heard about it because we got um, berated by the Irish patent activist, Kieran O'Riordan, about this in a newsletter. And I thought, well, <laughs> it's time we did something about this. So, we figured we can start, you know, the, we might be behind the eight ball because we missed the review period for this, this thing, but we can do something. So, we started a, um, a letter online uh, where people could just, it's a letter to Kim, Senator Kim Carr, who was their then Minister for Innovation and Industry, uh, where people could read the letter, put their name on it, and the support was just phenomenal. In, within two weeks, we had a thousand signatures on it, and it had been slash dotted, and it was, I was blown away, to be honest. <coughs> the, um, we got a response from that too, which was fantastic. Uh, the, the, the points in, the interesting points I've highlighted, a thousand people in the Australian software industry, and shows that there's significant concern. You state that patents are not necessarily necessary for the software industry and that they actively discourage innovation. So, you know, they read it, they, they're hearing our message. That's a good thing. <clears throat> what else do we do? We, I don't know much about activism, but I'm giving it a crack. So I do what other people do. Um, I hang out with a, I'm a member of the um, Bicycle Victoria, and now, now Bicycle Network Victoria. They do things like have ambassadors. So I thought, well, we can have some ambassadors too. So these are people um, I knew or I had met or had access to or who had already put in work um, to do this sort of stuff. This is, this is blatant, you know, trading on the celebrity factor of these people. Uh, so Bill Appleby is the CEO of the Victorian Partnership for Advanced Computing, which is VPAC. Anthony Burglis is a software developer and director of Southern Cross Software in Queensland. Roger Clark is a visiting professor of Australian National, National University and the University of New South Wales. Paul Gamp is the Vice President of Engineering Services and Operations for Red Hat. Dr. Liz Kitchen is an Honorary Senior Fellow at the University of Melbourne. Rusty Russell and Andrew Tuchel, I'll read out anyway because other people might see this video. Rusty Russell is a free software programmer and advocate known for his work on the Linux kernel. And Dr. Andrew Tridgell is a computer scientist known for his work on the Samba file server and a visiting fellow at ANU. I did just notice the other day we've got a complete gender imbalance here because based on you know, the support for this issue, this is, you know, totally doesn't represent the, the people involved in campaigning against this. So I'll be working to do something about that. So how do you submit a bug report to the government? What's the worst bug tracker you've ever used? Anyone? <laughs> Can someone give me a, an example of the worst, of their, their most hated bug tracker? Any bugzilla. Bugzilla? Yeah? <laughs> Emails. Emails? Spreadsheets. Spreadsheet. Oh, spreadsheets. <laughs> That's pretty good. <clears throat> okay, how about pen and paper? The, 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 uh, the bug tracking system for the Australian government is that you go around, you write up on a piece of paper your argument and then you go around and get people to sign it and you post it in, you can't fax it, you can't email it, has to be original copies, original signatures, in person, it's amazing. <laughs> um, so this is pretty old school, I'm just making a bit of a joke at it, to be honest, it's, it's the way a lot of governments do it. Uh, it has to be in a specific format, 250 words, including the words at the top to the Honourable Speaker and members of the House of Representatives. If you get it wrong, it just, you're gone. It, it took a lot, of, um, a lot of mucking around. But in the end, we got, we got something written up that we were happy with that included most of the arguments that we wanted. And we set about 
wandering around conferences and events and things like that. And the response to this was amazing too. We, um, there's 500 people at this conference and we got 1,000 signatures on this petition, which is twice as many people as at the conference. The, the number of, you know, if you laid out the pages, you know, back to back, it'd probably do a U shape around this room. It, a thousand doesn't sound like that many, I know, but it certainly makes a satisfying wad of paper, I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you. <clears throat> so, it actually did take quite a lot of legwork, and I certainly can't claim to have done that myself. There's a whole lot of people in our community who petitioned at LCA last year in Brisbane and lots of events and talks in their workplaces and things like that. It was really, it was fantastic. I was really inspired by the amount of work people put in because if you think about it, you know, it takes, oh, the other thing about this bug tracker is you actually have to, you have to talk to people in person. You can't just email them. You have to actually physically communicate with someone and, you know, walk up to them and introduce yourself and say, hey, can you sign this piece of paper? And although, you know, Although people are very passionate about this issue, people get very nervous in our community when you actually walk up to them and ask them to sign something. So, Anyway, once they knew what the issue was about, they were very keen to sign it, which is great. So I, I should just thank publicly all those people who did help uh, do the petitioning because that was a lot of work for them. So um, after I asked the Canadians for the fourth time, um, would they sign my petition? They said, no, I'm sorry, we're, we're not from Australia. We, um, we posted it off with a, a thousand signatures. Um, this is an example of what it looked like. I've blocked out the signatures, just so you can see. And we got a response, which was great. Bearing in mind, this is after the review of patentable subject matter was, you know, the review period had closed. This is actually in the report for the review. So this is a fantastic success just getting mentioned. And we got quite a good mention. A recent petition, members of the software industry, not necessary to encourage innovation, terms of patents are too long, defending against lawsuits is not viable, and then below, this is where Anthony Burgless came in, he was ahead of us, um, and that's why I've got him on as, a, as an ambassador. Uh, he, he put in a separate submission inside the review period, and he got a mention too. So. Although the report didn't actually uh, recommend any changes, it certainly gave us a good showing, which is great. It's a, it's a good result in itself. <clears throat> so following that, what I was going to do was then go and type in all the email addresses so I could spam you all. But it turns out you've all got such bad handwriting I gave up after two pages. <laughs> <laughs> Even the ones that have like at Gmail, I still couldn't make it the first part. So, uh, following that, we had a, um, a second. <clears throat> there was a review on innovation patents. These are a slightly different breed of patents. And we were ready for this one. We were on the mailing list for the, uh, they called IP Australia. Um, so we saw this one. Innovation patents are a seven year sort of mini patent. Except they're only mini in time, they're not really mini in um, other things. And they've got their own problems because they've got lesser requirements to actually prove things up front. So someone can attack you with these with a little bit less effort, which is kind of nasty. So we blatantly used this review period as a chance to say innovation patents are bad in just the same way that normal patents are bad. So it was like, a, you know, yeah, these are bad and give you another kick about patents as well. We, we thought that was a good, good, good thing to do. So we got some good, um, good responses for that. We sent out a mailing list and half a dozen or, no, probably about a dozen people put in individual submissions. And we also got in one from our ambassadors too, which was great. Uh, and I just found out the other day that Paul Gamp from Red Hat also got one in from Red Hat, which was fantastic. That's the first time we've actually had an organisation putting in one independently. Mm. Very exciting. So the report on that is to be announced. We will see what happens. I think they were leaning towards, it felt like they were saying, hey, we're thinking about getting rid of these things. Do you guys think they're a bad thing too? So that's, what, that's the impression that I got. So we'll see what happens. So uh, I think I've got a slide for this next one. Um, remember that petition? Um, I thought we'd finished with that actually. 
uh, and they rang up and said, hey, we have, have this process called a petitions hearing. And I pictured, you know, bushfire hearing, you know, where they step, sit there and accuse people of doing nasty things. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out it wasn't like that at all. It was five MPs sitting around a table, um, all recorded and everything, asking questions about this petition just to get some more information for the general public. And like the petition itself, that will be published in Hansard in time. So that was good. They actually had some interesting questions about what the issue was. I had, they had the scripted questions like, so how is this affecting other countries and all this sort of stuff. And then once we got into it, they were asking about, you know, oh, so this is really, you know, this is, this is about people attacking your businesses and suppressing, suppressing your work. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's exactly what it's like. We're, we're doing what we can, but it's not enough. The system needs to change too. So that was really exciting. Nice to talk to them person, uh, you know, person to person. So, question is, how are we doing so far? It's a little bit hard to tell. Um, you know, we, we've got no ruler to measure it by. Uh, but the support is amazingly strong in the community. I've, I've been blown away by, you know, it's a, it's a boring issue. Who wants to talk about patents? But people do. People really care about it. Even if they don't know lots of the legal details, they actually know enough to know that they should hate patents on computation information processing. So I think we're definitely, you know, what we need to do is bring this support together a bit more. I think we're definitely on the radar of the government and no doubt we're also on the radar of the, uh, the large corporations who hold lots of these patents. In general, I think patents have a branding problem. Uh, I went to a workshop recently for the um, this IP Australia group and um, the whole thing was about how do we rebrand patents to make people think they're useful? How do we get businesses to actually use patents? They, they don't think they're needed. What do we do? And one of the talks was by a patent, uh, the person who is the head of the Patent Attorneys Association. He was saying, well, you know, this is what we've been doing. We've been, you know, changing logos and talking to media companies and all this sort of stuff, which is just really encouraging to me because it means that we're starting on the front foot. We've, we've actually got something to work with here. We've got a general uh, feeling from people that there might be something wrong with the system. So that's kind of encouraging. So we've done all this. We've put in a petition. We've talked to people. We've uh, you know, put in for a review, a review. What do we do next? It's an interesting question. Uh, I'm. As you can tell, I'm making this up as I go. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm by no means a, an experienced activist, so I'll certainly be looking to other people in the community to help me out and guide me on this. And I'm looking to spread the leadership of this a little bit too, so we can get a bit more, a uh, few, few other voices involved. One important thing we need to do is engage with the non-free software community on this, because the friends of our, what was it? You guys know what it is, you know? A friend of my friend, the enemy of my friend is my enemy. What is it? The enemy, enemy of my enemy is my friend. That's right. <laughs> Something like that. So even though we, we go for free, free software and open source software, that doesn't mean we can't work with the proprietary companies. And they're actually quite a strong force in this because if we can get a whole company to sign on to, to this, this issue, you know, games companies and um, browser companies and all this sort of stuff, desktop software companies, I think that, we, that can also help. It's not going to be easy. Um, they've, they're going to be quite nervous about this. They don't have the same community support for this sort of stuff. Well, communities even. One thing I haven't done a lot of so far is talk to individual MPs. Um, and I think that's a really important thing to do because we can't actually change anything um, by petitioning alone. We have to get someone to take this issue on board. Uh, I'm not totally experienced with that, so I'll be hunting down more people that can help me with that. Wider discussion of this is, is important, I think. Uh, what I've been doing is, has been, I guess, a little bit um, opaque to some people. So um, I'll be doing more on the mailing lists and things like that to make people feel more involved in this and know what's going on. And I'll be trying to learn a bit more about activism as I go. I bought a book the other day. So. <clears throat> some of my ideas for the future. Um, I think I'd like to uh, form a, um, a non-profit association to, to get together with 
all these proprietary companies and non-free uh, and free software projects and things like that. Um, so it was quite quite useful to hear the the, um, the trade association information at Karen's talk the other day. Um, hopefully, we can do something like that. Will that'll allow us to raise some funds and actually do some, you know, do the little things. I, I went to the um, some of the uh, hacks and talks in the in the first day, and they said some of the things people really like about this stuff is the little things, the badges and the stickers and stuff. And while they felt like that wasn't quite within their, you know, <laughs> these are serious issues. You know, <laughs> people love the stickers and got involved because of that. So that's what I'm hoping to do too. Um, I don't really have anything against New Zealanders, uh, so <laughs> I, I am planning to build some stronger relationships with them because they've had some real successes on this and while their situation has been different to ours, um, the, the way they've built support for this you know, you know, as an organisation is important, so I'll be trying to do that. What else do we have to be aware of? Well, I guess there's going to be some backlash from large corporations on this and I don't know what form it'll take. and who it'll be, you know, who it'll apply to and things like that. Um, and it obviously hasn't started yet because, I don't know, <laughs> they just still seem worried. Um, what else? Uh, well, I also think it's important we start up, I, I was thinking about this last night and I couldn't get to sleep. The, um, these poor patent attorneys, what are they going to do? They'll be homeless. <laughs> so maybe I'll pass around a hat at the end of this and we can start a homeless patent attorney fund and <laughs> hopefully um, reintegrate them into society. This is something else I um, just started recently. Uh, the idea of this, this is a precursor to a, a non-profit organisation, like a trade association. The End Software Patents Coalition is fundamentally just, it's very simple, all you do is your organisation allows us to put its logo on the website to say we support this campaign against software patents. So far we've got two logos on there, a uh, well, guy that I was speaking to at PyCon and me. <laughs> so I'd love it if the one thing you did out of today was talk to your organisational project and allowed them to, uh, and allowed us to put your logo on this website. Uh, I could, I'll give you the website address in a second. So, the summary of all that is that patents are a bad trade for society. <coughs> patents on computation and information processing. What we want to do is to be left in peace to write our software. That's all we ask. That's not too hard, is it? So this is the beginning of a story about how the software industry changed the world and changed the patent system. It's exciting not because it's about patents, because patents aren't that exciting, frankly. Right? The details aren't that exciting. You, know, you don't need to know that much about the details. It's exciting because of our potential if we're not restricted by patents. That's really what matters here. It's not the legal issues. This isn't going to be a short story. I'm thinking maybe 10 volumes, one for Christmas every year. Mm -hmm. See how we go. I'm just in time for the rush. So I won't spoil the plot, you know, it's going to be a while, but you guys are all in it. So the one thing I can tell you is it's got a happy ending. So thank you. This is the website where you can uh, give us your logo and that's a documentary that you might find interesting. Hello. Very Hello. good talk, thank you. Um, as you're saying, we're, we're all part of this story and you know, if, if you're, you're saying you haven't spoken to MPs but you know, the most ideal thing is we, we all go speak to our own MPs so you don't have to do it and they all get talked to. But part of that also touches on what Paul Fenwick was saying yesterday is, you know, I get what you're saying, I'm not very good at explaining it and I don't think I know a lot about it sort of thing. So are you planning to or do you have, you know, resources developed so I can, I don't have to go through all the work you, well, you know, as much as work as you did researching mm. this stuff so I know it all in my head or even having stuff like yeah. you know, FAQs of these are the dot points they're going to query you on, here's the answers and then everyone's sending the same message to their MPs yeah, and then it's they a great question. it, you know. Thankfully we do, and I didn't have to do it. We've got this, uh, where this logo up here, End Software Patents, is actually uh, an, an international organisation. This is uh, the organisation that Kieran O'Riordan has organised. Uh, he has a fantastic wiki full of information. 
to be honest, I haven't read it, the entire thing my, uh, myself. Um, I just haven't had time. But there's a lot of information on there, really well documented. He's a very thorough, good writer. Um, and there's all sorts of stuff. Very, you know, even down to the specific country level, he's actually managed to follow what's going on in different countries' legal systems, which is just phenomenal. That's, that's how we got started, because he noticed that we'd missed this review. So that does have some useful information about, about stuff, but you know, I'll certainly be looking to get some more people involved to develop some Australia-specific stuff. So Ben, first of all, thank you very much for all your efforts on this. It's really appreciated. Um, second thing is, um, have you thought at all about uh, if complete abolition isn't achievable, um, what is achievable in terms of modifying patent law to make it less harmful? Mm. And uh, it seems to me that there are two key things that cause harm to our community and to other uh, uh, software businesses related to software patents and one is that independent invention is not a defence and the second is yep. that use of an algorithm for interoperability is not considered fair use um, and those two things if those two things went away then the issues with software patents would basically be fairly minor um, but uh, it would still allow um, for the the claims on the benefits of software patents to have some credence, possibly. Um, yeah. So that might be worth trying to put together, you know, that as a as an intermediate alternative, because I, certainly the use cases that you discussed and the ones that I've been involved with would fall under one of those two cases, one of those two, um, you know, headings. Yeah, I've, that's a really good point. Do we modify or do we? throw it out entirely and I've thought a bit about this and as I said I'm not a, an experienced enough uh, in, the, you know, in politics to, to know what the best thing is to do so I'm going on my gut feeling here mm. and I'm, I'm aiming higher because I think it's important to aim higher and then maybe the lower thing will be enough so I'm kind of hoping that if we say we want to knock out patents entirely and we aim for that maybe one day we'll get those two things that you've suggested and maybe that'll be enough for that for, for at that point in time but what we really have to do is aim high and aim clear because the one thing that's important is being able to polarize this issue as to you know what's okay and what's not okay and if we can polarize it by saying software patterns are bad and we need to get rid of them entirely perhaps what should be done it is yeah. in in the wording I don't know, of the letters my gut feeling anyway in the wordings of the letters and petitions to point out those two particular problems and yeah. then the implicit argument would be if you remove those two that also solves it but you that's could a, ask for abolition yeah. but yeah. point out the two but you in order for those two to be practical it would have to be on a balance of probabilities basis not on an absolute proof right because otherwise if you um, if you have a uh, independent invention being a defence, everyone can always say, I, I invented it independently. It would have to be under a civil type argument where there's a balance, balance of probabilities. Yep. Um, and at that and point you've just walked straight out of my experience. <laughs> yeah. But we can, I'd like to talk more about that. That'd be great. Can I, um, I, or I have an idea for what you do, sorry, oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> with um, uh, out of work patent attorneys, the, they can be uh, put to use working on, um, for working for the free software law centre. Software freedom law centre. That's software a great freedom law centre. We'll put them in a plane and ship them over to... <laughs> well, set one up here. We, you know, we need this distributed. Um, but uh, I have a feeling I missed the original um, petition. And I, I've just been looking on the website, and yes, I can sign up for the mailing list. Are there other things that I can do? I, I, yeah, yes, I also write to my local member and so forth. Are there other things that I can do to get my signature on a petition to use and other things like that that you've got on the website? For number one, if you could join our coalition, that'd be fantastic. Um, I don't have any other useful things at the moment, apart from being involved in the discussion and staying in touch. There'll definitely be things. Um, it's just that getting them organised is a little bit of work. So. But and it's not. I shouldn't. I'm not. I'm only using patent attorneys as a 
you know, something to kick because <laughs> they're part of the system. They're not actually. It's not their fault. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. All right, um, I'm going to ask the devil's advocate question that no one else is going to like here. Um, and that is, obviously, the purpose behind patients was for the people who are doing the, event the inventions to get cost recovery, which is kind of part of the capitalism model, which I know has plenty of protests right now, but um, do you actually think it's unfair for those people to actually get the cost reimbursement that they are getting from the licensing by using those patents? Yeah, that's a good question, and lots of people ask that. The answer to that is that the patent system isn't designed as a cost recovery mechanism at all. It's designed as a benefit to society. And if you swing it that way, the argument looks entirely different. But if you focus on the fact that it's supposed to be benefiting society, then things look different. Uh, we, need to, we need to focus on what we're actually getting out of this trade-off, not what other people are getting out of the trade-off. So yeah, I think that's... Yeah. Yeah, so just, just to clarify a bit more, the, the cost recovery model makes uh, invention uh, more likely to be profitable for people. So sure. that's yeah. what actually encourages the invention yep. because they can then patent it and then make money on it. Yep. If you took that away, then does that mean less people are actually going to do the work in doing the invention? It may do, but what we're actually saying here as, as a software industry, and I think this actually applies to basically the whole software industry, that's my feeling anyway, Everyone except, everyone who's not a mega corporation, and even mega corporations think software patents are a, a pain in the ass. They, they're more work, more, you know, more legal staff, more money they have to spend on doing this stuff. And as far as I can see, truly the only benefit to this is so that large corporations can suppress smaller corporations. I don't think anyone's actually inventing more things uh, and promoting invention by, by this mechanism at all. I think people don't read patents. I mean, has anyone here actually ever read a patent to do their work? Like, do, do you go and look them up? I mean, there's some obvious exceptions. But, you know, do you, on a daily basis, you go and look up, oh, I wonder if anyone's done anything new on this issue recently. Do you go and read them? And can you understand them? Yeah. I actually read one once that I'd been linked to because it was mathematically impossible. Oh. <laughs> Um, this isn't really a question, but you're talking about getting games companies involved. When you're looking into that, I should be able to help you with that because I know some people. Awesome. Thanks. So it might be going a little bit further than what Tridge was trying to sort of say, but if you're sort of looking at patents in the software industry, um, isn't there kind of a bigger issue in the patents damage sort of innovation worldwide in a lot of other places too, such as you know medical issues and stuff, or um, these days with you know, 3D printers and such, you know, basically software and you know objects are becoming interchangeable to a large extent and over the next few years especially aren't we going to more and more find that things that are patented you know can be easily produced and aren't patents you know if you're going to hide get rid of them in general and work out a better system yeah sure i mean i think that's certainly possible that these these are causing more widespread problems i'm i'm applying the standard computer science divide and conquer algorithm to this you know <laughs> software patents and then worry about the rest Um, hi. Um, so just a couple of things that might be worthwhile taking into account with the campaign, which I, I think is a pretty cool idea. Right. But um, part of your problem is that patents are seen to be one of the measuring, uh, the standard measurements for innovation. Um, now, this is quite deep. This, is, this goes into policy around um, research and development funding. This goes into policy around um, venture capital funding for companies and all this kind of thing. So I guess one of the suggestions I was going to make would be maybe if you, I don't know how this could be done, um, but trying to come up with some actual statistics and, and research around how patents are used, um, what the, I guess, return on investment of a patent, a software patent yeah. is, um, showing, um, j just actually trying to 
provide a bit of meat around the mm. argument that they're not good for the industry yep. and then using that to also say um, this is why innovation shouldn't be measured in this way. Mm. I've been to events before where they've said here's how much innovation we do in Australia and I've said well have you looked at the open source community and they've said what what you talking about? So um, it's <laughs> it's th th there's a little bit of misunderstanding. The other thing I was going to point out which I thought was a very clever legal hack even though it's a few years old now and the people that were involved aren't doing it anymore but I thought it was a very interesting hack was the idea, have you come across the Free Software Act? No, I haven't seen that. Okay, it's a slightly old thing, I'll tweet the link, um, but it was a really interesting hack because it took property law and put it on its head and said um, if we take the idea that um, free software is in the best public interest, then in the same way that a piece of land would be seen to be in the best public interest to be a park, and thus the original ownership, or well, the original owner would be you know, reimbursed, but the land would be used for the best public interest, and thus it not be um, you know, uh, able to be uh, typical land laws to be applied to it. Uh, the same thing could be happened to software. Um, and so it was basically an act that said that things like patent and trade, um, trademark and such shouldn't apply because the software itself is seen to be in the best public interest. It might be an interesting model to look at, so I just wanted to make those suggestions, mm. but cool stuff. I'll definitely look up on that. Yeah, thanks. Um, so just on a uh, couple of points that r were raised before, um, there's been, uh, there was a report, the Hargreaves report in the UK uh, t uh, 2011 and there was another one in Australia more recently, these have been commissioned by the governments and in them they make the point that uh, patents don't make sense in a environment where innovation is happening in a sequential manner. Um, which is what software... Sorry, this was... I, I didn't quite catch the first bit. This was a report on hardware, did you say? Uh, so, um, it, it was a government report into intellectual property um, and whether they need to make changes to the law. And one of the findings... That wasn't this one, the Pardon? 2009 review on, innovate, on um, patent law subject matter? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure... I'm oh, not, not in sure Australia. the Australian one was the one. Oh, okay, not in Australia. The other one's a Hargreaves one, which was a UK one. Yep. And they sort of make the point that it, where it is sort of sequential um, development, patents don't make sense. Um, but in some of those other industries, they could still make sense um, because. Yeah. Great. Would you be able to add a, a link to that on the um, N Software Patents Wiki? That'd be fantastic to see. Okay, I think we're running out of time somehow. Um, but until I fetch something, do you know who holds the world record for patents? I don't. Sorry. <laughs> Neither do I. Why I don't do have any useful stats on that. <laughs> I think he's not alive anymore. But <laughs> Okay. Um, on behalf of LCA team this year, we want to thank you for giving a nice time. Thank you.